Let's take a look at some methods that are used for studying the brain. The last technique that we'll talk about today is the electroencephalogram, EEG. In this technique, a researcher would place electrodes on the scalp of a participant and record the electricity observed at each one. Since the 1920s, researchers have known that there are different types of brain waves occurring when one is awake or when one is asleep. In this diagram, you see the many different types of brain waves that can be recorded during different states of arousal. In each graph, the y-axis is voltage, so positive charge or negative charge, and the x-axis is time, so when you have a very complex wave pattern, as in the upper right, relaxed, eyes closed, alpha, alpha rhythms generated, you have many waves per second of recording. But in the lower right, you have coma, uh, you have uh, very big, long, drawn out waves stretched out over time. The peaks and the valleys of the waveform reflect different amounts of positive charge or negative charge over time. Researchers have used EEG to study how the brain responds to events. In this kind of research setup, it is called event-related brain potential recording. So a participant would be seated in front of a visual screen and shown an object, and recording of the brain waves occur as soon as the object is presented, or as soon as the event occurs. Using this technique, researchers can see that the brain responds to stimuli as soon as 100 milliseconds following its presentation. That's within one-tenth of a second. So when we evaluate EEG, ERP, about how well it tells us when a process is occurring in the brain, it is number one. It gives us the best possible chance of capturing how quickly a process begins to be carried out in the brain. How well does EEG, ERP do when we think about how well it tells us where something is happening in the brain? Well, it's not very good. In particular, this technique doesn't do a good job at distinguishing the depth of a particular electrical generator in the brain. So you, if you add a large electrical generating signal deep in the brain, you might measure that on the scalp, and it would be hard to distinguish it from a smaller electrical signal just below the surface of the scalp. The technique does fairly well telling you whether a particular signal is on the left side of the scalp and from the left side of the brain or the right side, and also telling you whether it's more frontal versus more posterior. In terms of risk, EEG, ERP is also very low risk. It's number one in terms of having the best risk profile. There's no exposure to radiation and there's no exposure to a magnet. So, why not just combine fMRI and EEG? You can find the locations of the brain involved in a process using fMRI, and if you're recording simultaneously using EEG, then that can tell you how quickly the process begins to occur. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem is most electrodes are made of metal, and you cannot have metal inside an fMRI machine. It is now the case that there are electrodes that you can use inside of an fMRI machine, but those electrodes are quite expensive, and for some reason, researchers just have been slow to adopt them. That's all for now.